This morning, we got confirmation of another Palantir partnership, this one being with Hertz, the rental car company. Now, this partnership had been rumored for some time, given that the subdomain was listed on Palantir's site. But now we have confirmation on October 19th that Palantir has partnered with Hertz to drive operational excellence and enhance the customer experience. Alex Karp, Palantir CEO, joined the Hertz CEO on CNBC to talk about the partnership. And in this video, I have a supercut of just that. Enjoy. Hertz and Palantir announcing a new partnership today. The car rental company will utilize Palantir's Foundry software to help manage its 500,000 car fleet. Joining us now, Palantir CEO Alex Karp and Hertz CEO Stephen Schur. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining me. Stephen, Thank you've you, been Sarah. making a lot of deals since, be. since you've been CEO. A month ago, we had you on with Mary Barra and GM, and, and now with Palantir. What, what will this do for you? Well, part of our success will be the partners that we keep, and we're super happy uh, to keep Palantir as a partner. What this will do for us is we're a business that sits on an enormous amount of data, both about our cars, about our customers, and the like. And positioning those cars and managing those cars to their highest efficiency obviously brings, uh, you know, positive outcomes for the company and for our customers. Palantir and their Foundry platform enables us to take very different forms of data, whether it's data about our vehicles, data about the weather, data about airline schedules, take all of that, combine them in a way where we're not compelled to put them in a common form, and they give us output on which we can manage the company better. Alex, it's good to have you on the show, and really interesting to learn about all the different ways that your software is, is being put to work. How, how did the Hertz connection come together? Well, I mean, obviously, just from a purely uh, data management perspective, it's one of the most interesting businesses in the world. You have a, this massive fleet of, of 500,000 cars. The cars are registered all over the U.S., which means re-registration and managing of the fleet becomes an asset allocation problem. Asset allocation problems that are also include regulation require um, essentially next generation software. It, it makes use of both Foundry 1.0 and 2.0, so managing the data, getting it into one place, and also uh, when you have like a world-class CEO, as they have at Hertz, uh, being able to impose the decisions on the data. And there was just a lot of excitement. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Steve is kind of a cool dude and um, very, very <laughs> into both the operations and the visions of the business. Uh, and that makes a discussion around how it'll be implemented and implementing decisions just really, really exciting. And I believe that, you know, they're going to be winners, both in the software industry and other industries, and people who can combine uh, business acumen, management of very, very large data sets against uh, time sense of decisions will win. And so it's just very cool to be in a partnership where I think we're going to win. Well, Steve, a lot, lot, lot of love here. I mean, you've, you've been building out the EV part of your fleet. How does, how does this Foundry software help you do that? Well, this is central to it. I mean, part of what we do is we have telematics and intelligence in the car. We know where the cars are and where they're moving. But we want to know and anticipate uh, things about the car. We want to know how much charge is an electric vehicle coming into our location with? How much time are we going to need to put that car back up to a charge and put it out again? We need to know if brakes are going to, you know, are, are in need of repair. Commission those parts ahead of time. Have them there so we can turn the car quickly. Understanding and knowing that data, digesting that data, I think is the core of what we're trying to do here. This is a, a unique intersection of software and hardware. And obviously what Alex and his team at Palantir bring forward is an ability to take reams of information and consolidate it into a coherent package so that we can take action and action the data you know, that we're sitting on. And, and I think it's a super exciting opportunity, particularly around the electric vehicle, which is obviously the direction we're going uh, in terms of taking our fleet to an electric fleet to the tune of about 25% uh, by the end of 2024. Alex, for, for Palantir, I've noticed that the Foundry software is being adopted by a number of transportation companies, not just Hertz. I think you have deals with United and Ferrari and Airbus. H how big is this business going to get? And, and why, why is there such a good match here with, with some of these transport companies? 
Well, you know, the, uh, first of all, this is uh, what makes this partnership particularly interesting is that you just have this combination between things that Foundry has done in the past, like preventive maintenance, looking forward, uh, cycle of life, predicting where an asset should be, with dramatic issues around uh, registration and how these how vehicles are registered, and then moving to a more climate-friendly uh, uh, fleet all of which requires both integrating the data and then being able to decide against the data. And these are very, very big steps. Um, we do well with uh, complicated, interesting problems where the software hmm. gets shown off uh, to be valuable. As your listeners know, most software is kind of not super useful. And so we are always looking for industries where you can just really dominate through the integration of hardware and software and entrepreneurial acumen. And there's a lot of industries out there. Some of the most notable, though, are these very, very complicated, very regulated, super international or interjurisdictional businesses that involve large machines, cars, planes. Um, mm. And so, yeah, the software, you know, the harder the use case, the more the software has to be performant, the less it revolves around sales. We're not, we don't think we're good at sales. We think a lot of software good mm. companies are great at sales, and we want to show off software that works with partners that are the best. And so, we seek them out, and to some extent, they seek us out. Is it? Is it? You know, Sarah. Counters, yeah, Sarah, yeah. Go ahead, Stephen. No, no. I was just going to say, you know, part part of the success of our company rests on the level of utilization that we can put our cars out. Right. The return on our assets mm -hmm. is key to financial return to our shareholders. What that means is we need to use our cars. Utilization needs to be high. It means we need to bleed dead time out of uh, you know the time a car is out of service. It means registering the cars quickly, repairing the cars quickly, charging the cars quickly, anticipating all of that and, and, and aggregating the data such that we can act on it is really at the core of what we're going to do with Palantir. It, it is all about taking up the utilization, uh, the usable time a car is out on the road as a, as a, you know, a financial earning asset for the company. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you're just you're bringing it to 2022. Uh, renting a car is such an old right. school experience with that often involves 20, a lot of 2027. 2027. Okay, 2027. <laughs> there you go. Into the future. So, Alex, what I was going to ask about was you, you say that you are attracting a lot of partners with complicated business. What's happening with spending right now? Because there are increasingly worries about the economy and companies having to cut back Batten the hatches, as Jeff Bezos tweeted last night in response to something that was said on CNBC. So have you seen an impact in terms of software spending from your customers and potential customers? Um, you know, we, we, have a, we, we, we have a global business and, you know, Europe is slower, both because of, you know, financial constraints, energy problems, uh, war on the border and um, general kind of slowness and adoption of new technologies in the U.S., um, you know, our, our, our company's grown 67% year on year the last three years. Uh, what we see are, uh, you know, tough times bring out great leaders and great leadership. And the way you win in tough times is by, as discussed as an example, you take an asset and make the asset more valuable. You explain it to financial, uh, the financial world that it will be more valuable. You show your customers more value. And then, the, the, in a weird way, the tough times make you a stronger business. So pounding your business turns your business to steel. Uh, and so what we're, see, we're by and large seeing pretty significant uptick in demand in the U.S., um, both commercial and in government for very different reasons. Um, and we think the bad times will force people to move away from software that's about churning your own, uh, your own data and looking in the mirror at it to decisions figuring out how you can win, better asset allocation, making your asset more valuable, and it'll push very strong leaders uh, like Steve to the top, which we think is really a, a crucial part of why American industry is so strong. So thanks for yeah. sharing that. Alex, final question to you, because I always think of you, know, you at, the, at the center of some of these geopolitical issues, and I'm sure you read Xi Jinping's speech this week to his party at the Congress. A lot of talk of technology, and just overall reflective of the increasingly tense relationship between the U.S. and China. I was curious what you made of that speech and, and where you think this is going, given your vantage point in, into government defense. Um, well, you know, we, we at Palantir have been taking the threat of our adversaries, both in Russia and China, seriously for the last 18 years. Uh, we believe the West has a software advantage, a software advantage at war, but not an internal surveillance. 
which I think is destructive of, of societies. Um, I, you, you know, I think this is going to get much worse before it gets better, partly because um, the capabilities that the U.S. government has, both in software and hardware, are still underestimated despite uh, recent events. Um, and because our adversaries largely just underestimate us. They look at us and they see certain things that are obviously crazy, but they underestimate the entrepreneurial talent of the American people to rebuild things, redo things, to act quickly. Uh, and the impact of software-hardware combination, whether it's this partnership or in on the battlefield, is just something that is clearly on display and still underestimated. Mm -hmm. So I predict bad before it gets good. Alex, Stephen, thank you both for joining me.